Hi, Matt. Uh, this is Ray. Can you please perform a respiratory examination on Ray for your finals examination? Okay. Thank you. Fine. Hi, my name is Emma Cameron. I'm one of the fifth year medical students. Can I ask your name, please? Sure. My name is Raymond Diallo. Hi, Raymond. It's nice to meet you. I've been asked to do a respiratory examination on you today. Just involve me having a look and feel of your hands, your face and your chest, and then having a listen to your lungs. Does that sound okay? Of course. And if it's all right with you, as we're going through the examination, I'll talk back to my examiner, explain the sort of things that I'm looking for and what I'm doing. Sure. Okay. So um, ideally, I'd like you exposed in your chest, but we can keep you covered up while I look um, at your hands and face first. Okay. So start by having a look at you from the end of the bed. I can see that you're comfortable at rest and not short of breath. And there's nothing around the bed to indicate a respiratory pathology. Okay. So I'm going to start by having a look at your hands. And look specifically at the nails, is there any tar staining or any peripheral cyanosis? Turn your hands over for me, looking for any pallor of the palmar creases. And if you could splay your fingers for me like this, and don't let me push them in. Just checking for wasting of the small muscles of the hands, bring them back together. Why might that be relevant for me? Um, it's relevant if there's an apical lung tumour. Okay, thank you. You can relax your hands down now. Okay, um, and if you could put your hands out in front of you like you're stopping traffic, please, and hold them there. So here I'm looking for um, a CO2 retention flap, and I'd ask you to hold them there for 30 seconds. But you can relax, won't you? So if you could put your hands out in front of you like this, and hold them there. Here I'm looking for any fine tremors, which could be a side effect of a salbutamol or beta-2 agonist. Okay, thank you, you can relax. So I'm going to move on to have a look in your eyes and in your mouth. So I'll start with your eyes, if you can look towards me. Just having a look for any xanthelasma around the eyes, any corneal arcus in the eyes. And if you could pull down your lower lid for me. Looking for any pallor of the conjunctiva. That's fine, thank you. Have a look in your mouth now. So you could open it and stick your tongue out and lift it to the roof of your mouth. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Just looking for any central cyanosis. Okay. So I'm going to move on um, to have a feel of your neck and some of the glands in your neck to see whether they're swollen. So if I can just pull this down slightly. Okay. So just having a feel for the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Okay, that's fine. Next, I'm going to have a feel for your windpipe. Um, and some people do find this a little bit uncomfortable, but do let me know. Well done. Okay, so I'm checking that it's central, not deviated to either side. Okay, brilliant. Now I'm going to have a look at your chest. Um, so if we can just expose you completely. Check for any chest wall deformities, any asymmetry, any scars or skin changes. Pop your hands like this. Checking down both flanks. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Now I'm going to have a feel of your chest. I'm going to ask you to take some breaths in and out, please. All right. So if you can take a breath in and all the way out and in again. Okay, brilliant. So I was just checking chest expansion there, and that was good. Okay, move on to percussing your chest now. So that means I'm just going to tap down your chest wall and listen for the sound it makes. All right. Let me know if you experience any pain at any point. Okay, and I'll just have a listen over those areas. Again, just take some deep breaths in and out for me. Brilliant, thank you very much. Now I'm going to do a similar thing on the back, so if you could sit forward for me. So if you could fold your arms across your chest like this, and just lean forward slightly. So I'll just have a look at your back first. Folding your arms across your chest allows the scapula to move out of the way. Okay. Now I'm going to tap down your back, similarly as I did on the front. Okay, 
and now I'm going to have a listen at the back as well. Again, if you can just take deep breaths in and out for me. Okay, brilliant. Um, so the last thing I'd like to check is vocal resonance. So when I place my stethoscope on your back, I'm going to ask you to say 99, if you can, please. Okay. 99. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm just going to have a feel of your back now. I'm going to ask you to take some deep breaths in and out while I check the chest expansion. So you can take a breath in and all the way out and in again for me. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ray. To complete my examination, at the bedside, I'd like to do a peak expiratory flow rate, take a sputum sample and also um, do peripheral saturations. If I was worried about the saturations or if the patient was cold, I'd like to do an ABG as a more accurate measure of these. And also if I respect, expected respiratory pathology, I'd like to do a chest X-ray. So in summary, today I saw Ray and I examined his respiratory system. On inspection, he was comfortable at rest and not short of breath. There was no peripheral stigmata of respiratory pathology. On his chest, there was no abnormalities or deformities. His pulse rate was regular at 64 beats per minute and his respiratory rate was normal at 14 breaths per minute. On palpation, his chest expansion was good and equal bilaterally. Percussion note was resonant throughout the chest. On auscultation, um, breath sounds were vesicular. There was good and equal bilateral air entry with no added sounds. Um, I also performed vocal resonance on the back. If I suspected a respiratory pathology, I would have done this also on the front and laterally to localise any signs. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you move to your next station, please?